Hi everybody, welcome back. It's Justy, and today it is time for me to answer all of the wonderful Q&A questions you sent me. I'd like to thank everybody so much for sending me your questions. I honestly had this like little worry that I wouldn't get any questions at all and then I would kind of look like an idiot because I'd have to put something out, but I'd have nothing. But luckily you guys all came through. I got more questions than I was expecting. So thank you very much. That does mean that some questions did have to be cut out simply because of time. I couldn't get to them all, but I do really appreciate everyone who did send one in. And this certainly won't be my last Q&A video ever. So look forward to them in the future. Maybe you can send me the same question or a different question. Don't think your question was a bad question. If it didn't make it into this video, that's not the case. Sometimes it was just too similar to another one and I was trying to keep it so everything was a little bit different. But no matter what, I am still incredibly thankful that they all got sent in, and I think I've explained enough about receiving questions. Let's actually answer those questions. Yay! So up first for the questions, we do have the ones from my Patreons. They go first and are guaranteed to get all their questions answered. Matt was the one who sent me in some questions. He had three, so we are going to do those first. His First question is, what are your 2021 goals and how are you working on achieving them? Well, first up, I wanted 2021 to be a little better than 2020. I remember I put that in my welcome to 2021 video, which I would say so far it definitely has been. I mean, I still don't love that we still have this ongoing pandemic, that we can't go out, that I can't go to Disney, but things are definitely better. I had a goal to get at least one new kind of position this year for my job, which technically I did do. It wasn't like a higher pay promotion position, sadly, but it was something new, something different to put on my resume, something that looks better. So I'll take that as a win. So hopefully I can get more. I'd also just like to do what I need to do to get benefits back. I'd love to go to the dentist. <laughs> a goal for this channel was to not skip any videos, even though I do have a more busy job that takes up a lot more of my time than my old one. So far I am definitely succeeding at that which is making me very happy. I'm planning things out a little more in advance than I used to. I'm also filming things ahead of time when I can. That's not every video because I think sometimes that gets boring, right? Like I had to put out Falcon and the Winter Soldier when Falcon and the Winter Soldier had just come out. I couldn't talk about it weeks later. So things get moved around, things get changed. I do still film things last minute, but if I have a few ideas in my head and I have some time, I try and get them all filmed and then just slowly edit them throughout my free time. I also have a goal to get a vaccine, <laughs> which as of today, I do have my first appointment. I haven't had it yet, I gotta wait for it, but it's coming and I'm so freaking excited. Yay! Hopefully that was enough goals for you. Second question, waffles or pancakes? I do love both. I will put waffles over pancakes though simply because they have the beautiful little pockets where butter and syrup get caught in. Oh my god and they're fluffy and you can buy waffle makers that make a ridiculous amount of shapes and I love that. I know you can also make pancakes into ridiculous shapes. There's wonderful pancake art. I just can't make those so I never get those at home. The best I can do is like a Mickey Mouse head pancake. But with a waffle maker I can have any shape. So waffles. Lastly, and I think your most important question, honestly, if you make two small lasagnas and stack them on top of each other, is that one big lasagna or two separate ones? Expand and explain for full marks. I really do appreciate that your questions just went more and more ridiculous because that is basically my life. <laughs> if when you stack the lasagnas on top of each other, it's hot enough that the, the kind of cheese layer melts with the first pasta layer of the second lasagna. I would call that one lasagna. They're kind of stuck together in that portion. You've got your layer, right? Because there's cheese in every layer, but it's generally like stuck to the pasta. If when you put it on top, it's a little cool and it doesn't like form a, a seal, if you will, and you could just like easily push that top lasagna off, I would call that two lasagnas. So it really depends. I hope that was enough of an explanation for full marks. I'd really appreciate receiving full marks. Okay, that's our Patreon questions. So we're gonna move on to just our regular social media questions. I didn't get any questions from Twitter. Apparently y'all just hate me there. 
but I did get Instagram and YouTube. So let's start off with Instagram. Our first Instagram question is, is there a piece of cosplay that you forgot to wear slash make? Absolutely. I don't think I've ever forgotten to make something. I'm pretty good at remaining detailed in that regard. And I always have like an image of the character. Recently, I've started like writing out every single thing I'm gonna need to make or buy. So I don't generally miss those. I did, however, I think it was like two years ago now at Emerald City, brought Bombshell Batwoman down to take photos with a photographer. We were gonna leave the convention and go to a baseball diamond. It was gonna be very cool. I was very excited. I forgot to bring my bat. Like just to the whole convention, not to this photo, just this photo shoot, but you know, I had no bat and I was kind of disappointed, honestly, like my outfit still looks cool, don't get me wrong, but we were going to a baseball diamond and I was Batwoman without her bat. What was I supposed to do? Luckily, he was super kind. I told him I had made this error and he went to a sporting goods store and picked up like an actual real wooden bat that I would have never been able to get into the convention center. And we used that to take photos and it looked phenomenal. It didn't have my awesome like Batwoman painting that I worked super hard on on the top and bottom, but that's fine. It looked great and I got the photos that I wanted. So I'm really, really appreciative that he went and got that bat for me. That was so cool. So as I talked about having a list for like what you gotta make and what you gotta buy, I recommend a list for what you gotta pack. I never do one of those and look what happens. Next question, we have what con would you want to go to that you have never been to? I would definitely love to go to WonderCon in Anaheim. I've heard Steph talk about that one a lot. Apparently it's really cool and it is just outside of Disney, which is my freaking jam. I would also just love to go to a convention outside of Canada or the USA, which is something I've never done. Obviously a Japanese convention I think would be next level. That would be just insane. I would love to do that. Uh, maybe like a convention in England, since I have a few friends in England, that would be pretty cool. Maybe one day I'll stop going to Disney all the time and have more money for conventions. Okay, we have, what is your favorite Lolita dress you don't own? Hmm, it's a good question. I mean, I love all Disney printed dresses, obviously. And I don't own them all yet, yet being the keyword there. But I think one of my favorite prints that I don't own is Hanuli Starlight Serenity. It is so gorgeous in this pinky purple colorway. I love the OP. This was actually a dress that I was gonna buy a long time ago, but while I was planning on buying it, I became aware of Alice in the Pirates Peter Pan print. And that had to go first. And then by the time I was ready to buy another dress, that dress was gone. It was obviously limited in release. And honestly, I'm a little sad I didn't get it. I definitely, I think it was good that I bought the Peter Pan one instead. Don't get me wrong. But I am now on the hunt for that dress. I think I would look so beautiful in it. And it is just so stunning. So if you see one, let me know so I can get my grubby little paws on it. Were you ever a horse girl? You have major horse girl energy, LMAO. Love your videos. I feel like I should be slightly offended by that. Hmm. No, I was never a horse girl. I don't particularly care about horses, not to say I dislike them or think they're gross or anything. I just, I don't, I don't care. I've never felt particularly compelled to love a horse or be near a horse. I also similarly don't often think bad things about horses. I don't really think about horses at all. <laughs> Would I ride a horse given the chance? Probably. It might freak me out, but I'd give it a go. But no, I was absolutely never a horse girl. I am though a Disney adult and I have been reliably informed that is worse. So there you go. Alrighty, and our very last Instagram question we have, what is your favorite place to shop for wigs? If it's a princess wig, absolutely Evermore wigs, hands down, his wigs are gorgeous. I still can't believe how stunning they are sometimes. He's also very kind. I've asked him for tips for restyling after I've worn it a couple times to make sure that I do it as close to how he originally did it, even though it will never get super close because I'm an idiot with wigs. So if you're looking for an absolutely gorgeous princess wig, I could not recommend Evermore more than I could right now. It's 
amazing. For regular wigs, I really like Wig is Fashion for lace fronts. They're very high quality and they've served me a lot of good. It's my Steve Harrington wig, I think is one of the most amazing things they have ever done for me. A little warning with them though, their regular non-lace front wigs do have very small wig cap, like built, like the ones built in. Their, their head is small. <laughs> I don't know why because their lace fronts are not like that at all. So if you've got a bigger head, those may not work for you. If you have a smaller head, the wigs themselves are still very quality, so they'll be great for you. I bought a couple different ones from Epic Cosplay Wigs that I've been pretty satisfied with and happy. Are they the same quality as, say, Wig is Fashion? No, but the prices are also a lot lower. But they really do the job, they don't get too frizzy, they don't get too shiny. So I'm always quite happy with those when I purchase those as well. I haven't really purchased a lot of wigs for like Lolita or anything, so I don't necessarily have a favorite brand for them. But if I ever come across a Lolita company that I like for wigs, I will let you guys know. Alrighty, our last section, let's move on to the YouTube questions. First up, we have, if there is a huge post-COVID Comic-Con and a Lolita convention happening at the same time and you could only attend one of those two events, which one would you go to? That's actually very easy, I would attend the Comic-Con. Comic conventions are my bread and butter. They're my lifestyle. Ooh, I don't like that, I take that back. But they are what I go to the most, I'm very comfortable. I love to cosplay. I have so many cosplays, especially ones that I have made or acquired during quarantine that I haven't been able to wear out. So I would really like the chance to do that. Not to say I don't want to attend a Lolita convention at all. I think I would like to do that one day. I just probably wouldn't prioritize those over a comic book convention. Also, I put zero effort into researching Lolita conventions. I will admit, I mean, I also put zero effort into researching comic conventions, most people just tell me about them. I don't always know what Lolita conventions even exist. Like, I think there's one in Texas, right? I'd go to that, maybe. Our next one is a bit of a big one. How do you dodge toxic people in online fandom spaces, especially of mainstream ones with a lot of people in them? They seem to be everywhere and I stop casually engaging with fans I don't 100% know are chill people because they can make being an active part of the fandom quite an unpleasant experience. I'm sometimes not the best person to ask questions like this to because I just don't care. Anya sometimes asks me questions like this, not this specific one, much more pointed, but I have a very different view of things in that Yes, there are absolutely toxic people in every community. There is no way to avoid that. But I'm just, I'm just too old and I don't, nothing really bothers me anymore. I've had people come at me for dumb things on Tumblr back when that was a thing and I literally just started replying like, I'm, t I'm too old for this argument. I'm not gonna have it with you and I think this is stupid. <laughs> if it bothered me and ways that I still get rid of those people is one, Use the block button. Oh my God. So many people still view blocking as like weakness or losing or there has to be this big grand reason to finally block someone. No, use it all the time. People seem toxic, block them. You don't know them, it doesn't matter. People have offensive opinions, block them. People keep posting about stuff that you just don't like, block them, <laughs> get rid of them. It's not a weakness, it's not losing, it's you controlling what you see online. And that's the most powerful thing you can do, honestly. I think as well, although I say it in my I don't care type thing, not engaging and not encouraging is a really powerful thing too. Um, if people wanna argue or bring up stupid stuff, I literally just shut it down, like no. I will not have this argument with you. It doesn't matter if I have an opinion that I think is right, which usually I do. There is literally no point in arguing with these people, especially online. You can tell the difference between someone who wants to learn and someone who's just there to like tick you off. Don't argue, don't engage, ignore it, block. Or if you don't wanna block, just literally don't say anything back. It doesn't matter. If through the years I had engaged and argued with every single person over something that like realistically doesn't matter, I would be dead inside, Wah. more dead than I already am. So just don't, don't engage. Unfortunately, if you want to make new friends, you do have to run the risk of talking to some of these people that are not great. Just like in real life, you just have discussions, you feel each other out, and if they turn into something you didn't expect, again, you just, you move on. You tell them you're not interested in this conversation, you're not interested in this argument, or you block them, whatever you need to do. I feel like that's really generic, and I'm sorry. I It's hard to like pinpoint exactly what to do when I am 
a little more removed from things and also when I don't have any specific situations to reference because obviously some situations require different handling of things. So if you have anything about like a specific situation you want to ask me, please feel free. I will try to give you whatever advice I can, but honestly, curate the space you want to see online and don't engage with stupid people. So it's what I got. It's what I got for you. I'm very bad at self-help. <laughs> I have a couple of questions. You're lucky they're in the same paragraph, so I'm letting it slide. One, will you be doing another video on Falcon on the Winter Soldier? I'm wondering what you thought of the show. I hadn't planned on it. Well, I was kind of thinking about it, but like not seriously yet. I could. I have a lot of opinions, <laughs> as usual. So the answer is maybe. <laughs> By the time I sit down to record that video, it may actually be time for Loki, which I'm going to be very distracted and very invested in. But overall, I did really love Falcon and the Winter Soldier as a whole. Thought it was phenomenal. Let me touch on like some, some surface level feelings and opinions about it, if just in case I don't make a full in-depth video. Love the show overall. Love Sam and Bucky, obviously. Love Sam's family. I talked about all this already. Hate John Walker. He's a garbage man. I do recognize, obviously, it is very much the government who put him into this awful position who have kind of helped create this monster and then abandoned him, which is not great, but I still don't ever want to see him with the shield again in my life. And watching Sam and Bucky demolish him was one of the highlights of my life. Zemo's a sugar daddy. We all know it. It's true. I really don't appreciate what they did to Sharon. I'm glad we didn't have to sit through the, the love interest aspect that I had heard about. Sam's speeches, both to Carly and to the public, oh my god. Phenomenal, beautiful writing. I'm so glad they touched on some of these big issues. And we really saw why Sam was picked to be Captain America. He truly, truly is a wonderful embodiment. And I want more. That's my final thought. Oh, and Bucky in a t-shirt? Oh my god. And your second question, will you be doing some more gaming content? Maybe Sims 3 or Fable? Yes, is the very easy answer to that one, much easier than the last one. I actually have some gaming content already recorded. I just need to edit it. It will probably be coming out after this video, like the next one after. I do enjoy making them. I was waiting for a better microphone to come, which looks like it may not be. So we're gonna do what we can. As for the games you suggested, I have really thought about doing Sims 3. The problem is that I have a lot of expansion packs, like almost all of them plus stuff packs. And I refuse to not play with them all because I paid for them. <laughs> and every time I set up the games, like we recommend you don't do this for peak performance. And I say, no, I'm doing it. So my computer's good, but Sometimes it still gets a little stuttery while I'm playing and every once in a while it actually will go crash. And both of those I don't think would be great for viewing uh, a Let's Play. So I was thinking maybe instead of Sims 3, I actually have the Sims 2 Ultimate Collection, like of everything, and I have not touched that game in years. So I was thinking I'd install that and we'd do a me trying to remember how to do well in Sims 2 because I'm so used to Sims 3 type thing. But I definitely want to play something Sims for sure. And Fable I would super be into. If I remember correctly, I think you can get it on Steam. I don't know which one it is or, or what. I think it might be the first one. It's like an anniversary thing. Anyways, so I could in theory do it because I don't have a capture thing for like an Xbox or anything. And I would like to play Fable again. So that one's a maybe. I don't know how I feel about having to purchase it again because I already own all of them. But we'll see. But there certainly will be more gaming content. Something Sims for sure, as well as other things in the same realms of what I'm into. I'm glad you're enjoying the gaming content. That's awesome. Congrats on 1K. Hope to see more great content from you. Ah, thank you. <laughs> what was your first cosplay and what would you improve on it? A fun question. I actually have a whole video that is my cosplay beginning to end, the very first one that I made to the most recent at that time. If you're interested, you can watch it. As for my first, what I'd be my first official cosplay, it was Lady Loki. I am 
still very proud of what I accomplished considering it was my very first one and I didn't even have a sewing machine. I had to go work with my grandmother. <laughs> and I do have every intention to actually redo and re-cosplay Lady Loki. I just haven't gotten there yet. Some things that I would immediately approve upon just looking at a basic photo, way better horns, ones that don't just look like styrofoam spray painted because that's what they were. They're not even facing the right way, but whatever, it's okay. I also would not use a Halloween store wig that was a poor decision. The loincloth honestly wasn't too bad. I was pretty pleased with that. I would probably add a bit more texture and detail to it, but overall I was really happy with the way that turned out. I would make my own corset or bodice. I couldn't at that time, so I just purchased one, but now I absolutely could make my own corset and make it very cool, so I would do that. And other just a little improvements here and there. My makeup would be much better this time, you know, things like that. Would I create a staff? Probably. Lady Loki deserves a staff. <laughs> All right, and our very last YouTube question. What is your favorite thing about Lolita fashion? I like that I have a way to be what I view on myself as super feminine without it being what I felt was forced down my throat my whole life. And that's not by like my family or anything, that's society. My mom definitely wished I was a girly girl, but she would never force it upon me. But I always felt, you know, there was a specific way you had to be girly when I was growing up. Everything was pink and everything was the same exact stuff and I felt very constricted into it. And anyone who knows me knows that I do not like being told what to do. So all of this resulted in me really hating pink for a very long time. I would not go near it. And as I got older, I realized, no, actually, I do really like pink. It's a great color. And Lolita Fashion has really given me a way to wear pink in this outlandish, very different way that I appreciate. I can be feminine in a way that I choose, not in the way that other people expect of me. And there's just such fun, beautiful prints. There's things you'd never see on regular clothing, which is a shame. And you get to have all these components in an outfit, you know, Regular days I throw a jeans and t-shirt and that's fine, but when I get on to put on Lolita, you know, I get to, to pick the beautiful head accessories, you know, I get to put on fancy things on my hands that I wouldn't normally wear. I get to wear these really cute shoes, so I just love it giving me that freedom and that beautiful feminine picturesque image that I have always wanted but have not been able to obtain. I also really like that young children always ask if you're a princess when you're wearing it because yes, yes I am. And that was all our questions. We did it. <laughs> I estimated this video at being about 15 minutes. I can already tell it's going to be longer than that. I like to talk. Again, thank you so much everybody for sending in your questions and thank you to everybody for subscribing again. It's because you guys are here and we hit a thousand that this video is even out, so claps to you. I hope you enjoyed my answers and look forward to maybe one day us doing another Q&A video. I don't see why not. I do enjoy receiving your questions and answering them. Our next subscriber celebration video, I don't know what it'll be. Might not be another Q&A, might be something different, might not, who knows? I haven't really thought it through. But I think doing it at every thousand is too easy now. You know, we hit a thousand. So our next celebration will be at 5,000. A number I may not ever hit, but that's what I've decided. So good luck to you, good luck to me, good luck to the channel. Thank you so much for watching today, everybody. I appreciate all of you, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!